Life Philosophies Unleashed. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, am I truly in control of my choices? It's a question that goes beyond everyday decisions, like picking what to eat or which route to take to work. It digs into the very fabric of who we are. Now, what if I told you that a rare and fascinating brain surgery might just hold the key to unraveling this age-old mystery? Meet split brain surgery, also known as callosotomy, a procedure that's done more than just help patients with severe epilepsy. It has opened a door into a realm of human consciousness that challenges our most fundamental beliefs about free will and decision-making. You might think of yourself as a singular unified mind making deliberate choices. But what if I told you that's not the whole story? What if there's a whole other side of you making decisions without your conscious awareness? As we dive into the strange and enlightening world of split brain research, prepare to see your mind in a new light. This journey into the science of the mind could forever change how you see yourself, your thoughts, and even your ability to choose freely. Let's explore what makes you, you. Let's break down split brain surgery in a way that makes sense. Even if you don't have a background in neuroscience, picture your brain as a house with two wings, the left wing and the right wing connected by a long hallway. This hallway is the corpus callosum, a bundle of nerve fibers that acts like a high-speed internet cable, letting the two sides of the brain communicate smoothly. Now, imagine if you cut that cable. The two sides of the house can still operate, but they can't exchange messages anymore. That's essentially what happens during a split brain surgery, medically known as callosotomy. Doctors use this procedure to treat patients with severe epilepsy cases where electrical storms in the brain cause debilitating seizures. By cutting the corpus callosum, doctors stop the seizures from spreading between the brain's hemispheres, offering a last resort treatment for those who don't respond to medication. But as a side effect, this surgery has revealed something fascinating. The two hemispheres of the brain can function almost like separate entities, each with its own thoughts, desires, and even consciousness. It's as if the brain now has two minds that sometimes don't agree with each other. Intriguing, right? The origins of split brain surgery go back nearly a century. But it wasn't until the mid 20th century that it transformed into a revolutionary tool for both medicine and neuroscience. Back in the 1930s, the very first callosotomy procedures were attempted as experimental treatments for epilepsy. The idea was radical cutting the corpus callosum, the thick bundle of nerves that connects the left and right brain hemispheres, could potentially stop severe seizures. But it wasn't until the 1960s that this procedure became more refined, allowing doctors to perform it with greater precision and safety. This opened up an unexpected avenue of exploration into how our minds work. Dr. Michael Gazzaniga, a pioneering neuroscientist, saw an opportunity in studying patients who had undergone this surgery. He realized that by separating the brain's hemispheres, scientists could observe how each side functioned without the influence of the other. It was like lifting the hood of a car to see how each part of the engine operated on its own. What Kazaniga discovered went far beyond epilepsy treatment. He uncovered the hidden complexity of human consciousness itself. This marked the beginning of a new understanding of how our minds create the illusion of a singular identity. Imagine living with two separate minds in your head, one that controls speech and logic, and another that manages more abstract thinking and visual understanding. This is the reality that split brain patients experience. When Dr. Michael Gazzaniga began studying these patients, he found something astonishing. Each hemisphere of the brain could function like an independent entity. One might see an image, while the other hemisphere might struggle to describe it. It was as if there were two passengers in the same car, each trying to drive but taking different routes. This realization challenged a fundamental belief we hold about our minds, that we have a unified, single self that directs our thoughts and actions. 
But what if that self is more like a narrator trying to make sense of a complex story? Kazaniga found that the left hemisphere often plays the role of a storyteller, creating coherent explanations even when it doesn't have all the information. It's a bit like a sports commentator making up reasons for a player's actions when they can't see the whole game. This discovery forces us to confront a mind-blowing question. Is the sense of a unified self just an illusion crafted by our brain to keep us feeling in control? Now, imagine waking up and finding that one of your hands is doing things on its own grabbing objects, turning on lights, or even fighting with your other hand. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Yet, for some split-brain patients, this is their reality. It's called alien hand syndrome, and it happens when the two brain hemispheres, cut off from each other, start acting independently. The right hemisphere might control the left hand while the left hemisphere controls speech, leading to situations where the patient's actions seem out of sync with their intentions. It's as if each hand has a mind of its own, acting without the permission of the other side. This phenomenon sheds light on how much of our sense of control comes from the communication between our brain's two sides. When that communication is disrupted, we see glimpses of how fragmented our minds can be. It's like watching a puppet show where one puppet starts moving on its own, even though the puppeteer isn't pulling the strings. And this raises a deep, unsettling question. If different parts of our brain can operate independently, then how much control do we really have over our actions and decisions? Let's dig into the heart of the matter-free will. For centuries, philosophers and scientists have debated whether we truly have the power to make our own choices. But split-brain research puts a whole new twist on this debate. When the brain's hemispheres are separated, they start to act like two minds in one skull. One half can see an image, while the other half might not even know it's there. It's like having a co-pilot who keeps secrets from you. This challenges the very idea that we are always aware of what's happening in our minds. Imagine your brain making decisions without telling you about them, and then letting you take the credit for those choices. Research has shown that many of our decisions are actually made subconsciously. Milliseconds before we become aware of them, it's as if our brain drafts the script hands it to us, and we believe we came up with it ourselves. So what does this mean for free will? Are we truly the authors of our actions, or just the narrators, explaining decisions that were already made deep within the brain? This new perspective suggests that free will might be more complex and perhaps more limited than we ever imagined. To understand how consciousness might work, think of it like a symphony orchestra. You have the strings, the woodwinds, and the brass sections, each playing their part. Alone, each instrument sounds incomplete, just a melody or a rhythm. But together, they create a piece of music that feels whole and cohesive. That's what neuroscientists call emergence. The idea that consciousness arises from the interaction of many smaller parts, like neurons firing together to create thoughts, emotions, and the sense of self. Split-brain research suggests that consciousness isn't a single conductor leading the orchestra, but rather the music itself, emerging from the combined effort of many players. When the corpus callosum is cut, the symphony doesn't stop. It just starts playing two different tunes at once, revealing the hidden complexity of our minds. This idea has profound implications for how we understand free will. It suggests that our sense of being a unified self might be an illusion, a beautiful, intricate story that our brain tells itself. And while we might think we're the conductors of our lives, the reality could be more like dancing to a rhythm that's being composed deep within us. A rhythm that we can influence, but never fully control. Here's the good news. Even though our subconscious minds play a huge role in shaping our decisions, we aren't entirely at their mercy. Enter neuroplasticity, the brain's remarkable ability to adapt, learn, and rewire itself. 
Think of neuroplasticity as your brain's ability to renovate itself, like updating the software on your phone or rearranging furniture in a room to create a better flow. It means that while some of our decisions might be influenced by hidden processes, we still have the power to change those processes over time. This opens up a world of possibilities for personal growth and self-improvement. Practices like mindfulness, meditation, and therapy can help us rewire old habits and form new neural pathways, creating more space for conscious decision-making. It's like training a muscle consistent effort can make your mind stronger and more flexible. So while you might not have complete control over every thought or reaction, you do have the ability to shape the way your brain works. Neuroplasticity is a reminder that while our minds have hidden depths, we can still navigate those waters and steer toward a more intentional, fulfilling life. One small change at a time. Understanding the hidden complexities of our minds isn't just an academic exercise. It's a tool for transforming our lives. When we recognize that many of our decisions are influenced by subconscious processes, it opens up the possibility of making better, more intentional choices. It's like discovering that the autopilot on your plane has been flying your journey all along. But now that you know it's there, you can adjust the settings and take the controls whenever you need to. This knowledge encourages us to be more forgiving of ourselves and others. When we understand that not every action is the result of a deliberate choice, we can develop greater empathy and patience. For example, realizing that your friend's sudden outburst might be rooted in deep-seated emotional patterns, rather than a conscious decision to hurt you, can change how you react and respond. Moreover, understanding our mind's inner workings can help us break free from habits that no longer serve us. By recognizing when our brains are running on autopilot, we can interrupt those patterns and create new, healthier behaviors. It's like having a cheat code to unlock personal growth, allowing us to live more consciously and in tune with our true goals. Imagine if you could shape your mind like a sculptor shapes clay. Neuroplasticity makes this possible, allowing us to change the way our brains function through consistent practice and effort. This might sound complex, but it's actually simpler than you think. Practices like meditation, mindfulness, and cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT are tools that can help you rewire your brain, replacing old negative thought patterns with healthier ones. Think of it like planting seeds in a garden. Each positive habit you develop is like a seed that grows into a new neural pathway. Over time, these pathways become stronger, while the old, unhelpful ones start to fade away, like weeds being cleared from a garden bed. Neuroplasticity is proof that while our minds may have default settings, we aren't stuck with them forever. This means that even if you've struggled with anxiety, negative thinking, or unhealthy habits in the past, you have the power to change the way your brain processes those thoughts. It's not about achieving total control over every thought, but about gradually shaping your mental landscape. With time and patience, you can create a mind that better aligns with your values, desires, and long-term goals. As we journey through life, we often wrestle with the tension between wanting control and accepting what we cannot change. Understanding the brain's inner workings can help us strike a balance between the two. Yes. Split brain research and the science of consciousness show that not all of our decisions are fully conscious. But that doesn't mean we're powerless. Instead, it means we have a deeper understanding of how our minds operate. It's like learning the rules of a game you might not always win, but you have a better chance of playing strategically. By accepting that some decisions arise from subconscious processes, we can be more compassionate toward ourselves when we make mistakes. At the same time, recognizing our ability to change through neuroplasticity reminds us that we can steer our lives in new directions. It's about taking the wheel when we can and letting go when we can't. So as you reflect on the nature of free will and the mysteries of the mind, 
Remember that life isn't about having complete control. It's about learning how to navigate the currents with grace, knowing when to steer and when to flow with the tide.